Welcome back everyone. My name is Matthew McKenzie, a care author, an activist, and I also run several online care groups aimed at those supporting someone with mental ill health. Now this video is mainly informational purposes to be honest. Usually I just promote care of poems that I do or stuff that I'm writing about. I thought to share with yourself if you clicked on this video, you're probably interested in the things carers can struggle with. And when I'm talking about carers, I'm talking about unpaid carers, family members, relatives, friends, that sort of thing. So let's get into it. What's, what's usually the, the 10 things carers can struggle with? And do take note, um, not all of the things carers will or face would be different for each person. But the first one I would sort of focus on would really be isolation, which carers can often go through, especially when they're caring in a crisis. They have to be at home. The person that they're caring for is very unwell, seriously unwell. They have to be in trying to care for them and they may not be able to do anything else but provide care. It becomes difficult, I suppose, depending on what symptoms the person's caring for, especially if it's mental illness or things that other people can't fully relate to. So you can't always describe the situation to other people and thus the care feels isolated. The next one, I'd say number two, which um, carers can struggle with, and I think this affects quite a majority of unpaid carers, and that would be emotional strain. So obviously taking care of someone you have to be responsible for their health and even yours as well but that can be really stressful depending on again what type of care you're providing and it could be stressful especially if it's um, mental ill health that you're caring for someone suffering mental illness you could suffer depression if you're struggling with providing care and the health of that person could be declining it could be the emotional strain of guilt anger it could even lead to sleep loss which means if you're not sleeping so well it's harder for you to care the third thing would be quite apparent these days to be honest during the cost of living but that would be financial burden now as, as mentioned not, not everyone's gonna go through this sort of thing but if you're caring um, it's well known that it's hard to provide that care and support especially, I suppose, in, in the UK, not, not just the UK, but in, in some sense globally, depending on the health and social care system. Now, to be honest, it's, if you're not earning that much, if the benefits provided to the care or the cared for is not adequate, then yes, you are going to struggle. You are going to face financial burdens. It also can be a problem if you're caring for someone who's has got addictions, could be gambling, um, other forms of addictions, alcohol, money's going elsewhere and that can impact on the financial situation, especially if they cared for was, let's say, the person that was earning and they become very unwell. That means um, a cut, I suppose, in losses regarding finances. There's more to it than that, but I don't want the video to be overly long. But that's the third thing carers can struggle with. Fourth one is how caring impacts on the future or the, care, the carer's um, prospects. Obviously, if you're caring for someone, um, you can't really work in at the time. In fact, I would go so far to say that caring in itself is a form of work, but then you're not <laughs> paid that well to do it, to be honest. And to be like, quite a few people will disagree with this. I don't think you should really be paid to care. I don't think that's the right way of looking at it. But Going away from that, if you're caring for someone in a crisis, they're very unwell, you cannot be possibly um, you know, at your job. And if you're not at your job, you're not earning. This also goes towards future prospects. It's not just work, it could be education as well. Again, if you're caring, it's going to be harder to, to study if you're at college or if you're a young carer at school. So this is how caring impacts on opportunities uh, and, and prospects. And before I go on, it's not to state that caring over is a burden and a care for is a drain. 
on relationship but there are parts to caring that needs to be planned out well before it hits these uh, difficult situations in fact what I'll probably do um, at a later date is make 10 or 20 things that make the caring role um, a, a good thing to do to be honest so let's look at number five um, identification as a carer this, this, this thing probably is one of the most or biggest things carers can struggle with and the reason I'm saying this is um, can be a difficulty for carers is that not everyone sees themselves as a carer, let alone an unpaid carer or an informal carer, or the term that they're usually mentioned under. People usually find care and support if uh, husband, wife, relative, friend, and they might prefer it that way. But the problem is, is if they're not being identified, then they may risk losing out to support, which is basically owed to them, to be honest. Identification as a carer can also lead to information on how to navigate the tricky and complex health and social care system. Uh, it doesn't help that the tricky, uh, complex health and social care system also struggles to identify carers. This could be down to um, resources being thin on the ground, hence um, complex uh, online systems, people not on the ground, um, being trained to spot unpaid carers or those struggling to provide care. So it's almost um, a two-edged sword on this one. So a big problem is one identification as a carer. All right, so number six, this actually is following up from the previous thing I mentioned before regarding identification, but this is actually getting access to support. Now, you don't always have to be identified as a carer to get access to support. But even if you are identified as a carer, then getting access to support can be very tricky. And the biggest thing that makes it so tricky is resources being thin on the ground or underfunded services. And I'm, I'm not talking about getting access to support, I'm talking about respite, which used to be, um, I suppose, years ago, offered to a lot of carers who are caring under difficult circumstances. They need a break, so respite was offered. Advocacy. Um, again, if you're navigating the complex health and social care system, you perhaps would need someone to advocate on your behalf if you're struggling understanding um, specific meetings regarding uh, support for the kid for, or support for yourself. So that's probably one of the biggest ones that's perhaps lacking in support these days is advocacy. Emotional support. Um, I wouldn't say that's as big as a problem as the rest of our advocacy, but nowadays people who are caring just cope. Um, what we have these days in the UK is what we call IAPS, um, increasing access to psychological therapy. Now that's not often tailored so well to specific people. It's um, sort of a casual um, reference to those struggling with emotional um, needs, could be depression, stress things I've mentioned before. So emotional support can be a tricky one um, if you're trying to get access to that as a carer. And also planning for the future. I did mention that before. People sometimes fall into the role of providing care, not realizing there's things they need to do to plan for the future. Now this could be lasting power of attorney, um, protecting finances, especially, and I'm talking about especially mental health needs those who suffer under mental illness once they relapse things can go out the window if you know what I mean so planning for the future especially if you're an older adult carer and you're caring for a, um, a younger person son or daughter you want to be thinking about planning for the future but you do need support in doing this All right, so let's go on to number seven strains on relationships um, now, I'm not talking about strains in a relationship, it could be, as I mentioned before, can can be a joyful experience. Something, if we're in a family, we usually go through, um, if you want to be caring for someone, maybe in the family, you may be even cared for yourself, but to be honest, caring, as I've mentioned, can be at times stressful, especially if you're finding it difficult to um, take control of any physical health needs, mental health needs. And that can lead to arguments, it can lead to misunderstandings, can lead to um, breakdowns in relationships, not just with, with 
between the care and the care for, but also between other uh, family members uh, or friends, for instance, You're not spending enough time with your friends, obviously, but that, that's just going to be a strain. Or the family, some certain family members are not sort of putting in the weight, they're sort of leaving everything on a particular main carer. And again, that, that care is going to snap, saying that I need support, why are you not helping? So strain on relationships is, is um, the sort of one. But three, three more, eight, I think is one of the most trickiest ones, to be honest. Um, being involved in care or caregiving. Now, the reason I'm saying this is absolutely tricky is, again, the, the big C, which is confidentiality. Certainly needed in a fair number of times, patients, confidentiality, care for confidentiality. But then there's times this is not sort of balanced. So again, if the care is not involved, a good example is um, admittance to um, the care for in the hospital and also discharge and the care is not involved, the family's not involved, and they're the ones that's going to be providing the, the, the care and they're going to be providing the, um, the adv you know, advocating for the care for. If the confidentiality was unbalanced and the care was not involved, then that means they're not involved in care. It's also not just confidentiality, it's also jargon. Now the NHS, unfortunately, is still riddled with a lot of jargon. I can imagine that the care are reading through dreams or medical reports, um, things that regards care planning can be put off with jargon. You know, she was trying to take the care for to the doctors, and uh, the doctors saying this, this needs to be done, that needs to be done, and the care don't quite understand. A, a good example, I suppose, is, is, is when the cared for has um, problems with um, medication or that there's treatment that's gone wrong in the hospital or something like that. And the carer has to get on board and try and work out what's going on and why it's happened. Also being involved in care, again, I've mentioned relationship breakdowns, care, and I'm talking about mental illness again, sometimes care is going to be pushed away if you could say the person the care for is suffering with psychosis, bipolar, har harming. Again, that can cause relationship breakdowns and therefore the carer can't feel that involved. And again, I've mentioned um, being missed off as being identified as the carer which means a lack of um, the care being involved in care, especially in regards to um, the missing of patient um, or cared for um, health forms, things like that. Now, there's more trick than that. I should really do a whole video on these things, but I'm just going for the 10 at the moment. So number nine is advocating for the cared for. Um, this is, again, things carers can struggle with. Now, again, confidentiality might sort of slip in between here, you know, it's not just that if you're advocating for the care for, and even if the care for agrees for you to be involved, the care must, and again, try hard to try and navigate the complex nature of the health and social care system. And that would perhaps be dealing with doctors, social workers, pharmacists, care agencies, receptionists. Um, and it's basically just trying to get that information from them in a way where there's no conflict. But you need to advocate for the care for. And it's not even just that, you probably be, you might come down to complaints and misunderstandings. So you might end up having to go to the patient advice liaison services or trying to engage with a, a care or support officer at the local care center things might get out of hand and you might end up having to speak to your MP regarding situations where you just don't understand how to, to deal with. So advocating for the care for can be a struggle at times. Last one, and this is the most biggest of all, focusing on themselves. As I've mentioned earlier on, um, quite a lot of people actually fall into the caring role. Most, if not all, of the previous nine things I've mentioned focuses on the cared for, you know, the carer struggling, advocating, fighting for the cared for. But then if it becomes unbalanced, the carer can sort of lose track or lose sight of themselves and their own well-being. So it is important for carers to take time out, um, talk to a friend. Not easy if you're caring in crisis and remember resources are thin on the ground um, with the health services in a crisis at the moment. This includes social care. Um, things need to be 
refreshed, if you know what I mean. So there we have it, 10 things, and there's a lot more than that. I could have done 30, 40, 50, to be honest, but I want to keep this video short. So 10 things carers can struggle with. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.